This week I'm going to show you how you can make some really cool pictures using water droplets. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, a few episodes ago, uh, we made an episode about shooting indoors because it's getting a little bit chilly and people wanted to shoot inside. And so Paul from uh, Miami, Florida actually saw this and he wrote in and said, do you have any more suggestions for shooting inside on a rainy day? Well, Paul, I know you don't get snow there, but you do get some rain. And the fact is it's actually raining here in Phoenix today. And so we thought, hey, let's do something with raindrops or some water. And so what I did was I set up this really cool setup with some water droplets. And then what we did is took those uh, photos and then made some iPad wallpapers. And these are things you can use not only for an iPad wallpaper, but for a screensaver or maybe a background for a PowerPoint presentation or a keynote or just to print out for a cool poster or use it maybe for stock. You can do almost anything with these photos and you can shoot all this stuff inside where it's nice and toasty, warm and dry. So let's get right to it. To get things set up, I first put out two wooden boxes and then put a sheet of glass over the top of them. I covered the glass with some Rain-X to make sure that the water beaded up really nicely. I sprayed the water onto the glass and then I put some objects that were really colorful on the table, set up my camera with my macro lens, added a flash, and I was ready to go. All right, well, we have the glass all set up. I, I have my Rain-X applied and my water sprayed on there. Now, one of the things I did do was let this stand for a little bit because it makes the water evaporate a little bit and I got a little bit better results. And so you can try both ways. Shoot ex as soon as you get the water on there or wait about an hour to let some of that evaporate. And you'll see that it makes a little bit better uh, glass so you can see what's underneath there. Now, what I have set up here is you have to have a lot of light because we're shooting at F22. Now, the reason we're shooting at F22 is for depth of field. That allows us to focus not only on the water droplets, but it actually allows us to see what's underneath and if you look really closely on the pictures, you'll see that the water droplets actually allow you to see anything we put underneath here. And so you can play with different aperture values, but I like to have a really small aperture for something like this. I've got my macro lens set up. I have this on manual focus and uh, my tripod is set. And so now all I have to do is I've already got my flash set up. Now the flash is over here at this angle, by the way, because of the angle of incidence. I don't want to have this where I'm reflecting a bunch of light. So I'm sort of just skimming this light in so that the uh, reflection goes out the other way. And so that is what we're doing. So the angle of incidence, the angle of reflection are the same. So putting it at this weird angle helps to make sure I don't have anything crazy. Now you can use different modifiers. We just wanted lots of light. So we just use this normal modifier and you can use a speed light. You can use a studio strobe. This is a quantum flash, but you need a lot of light. So you might have to put a light pretty darn close. And even better, if you have a macro flash, you can use that. So now that we have everything set up, this is where it gets to be really fun. All I have to do is take this glass, I can move this glass around on these uh, boxes right here, and I can put different things underneath that. And I have different size of water beads. I've got larger and smaller sizes. So all I have to do is put something underneath there, move this around, make sure I'm in focus, take the shot, and I've got this really cool shot. I'm seeing that I've got a little bit of wackiness, so I'll just move this right here, and it's really pretty easy. Take a shot, take another shot here, good. I'm going to move this around. I'm going to put some different colors underneath there. So I've got a bunch of stuff over here with lots of color. So I'm going to take this. This is just an orange in a bag. So I sort of rummaged around the office today and stole Kelsey's lunch. And so I'll put that underneath there, make sure it's lined up correctly. And I'll take a shot. I'm getting lots of reds in this. I love it. So I'll make sure I got that in there. I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to put all these uh, colorful things underneath here and we'll just shoot a bunch of stuff. And uh, once we get that done, we're going to have a lot of options to play with for our screen savers and our wallpaper for our iPad. Now, one thing I think would look really cool is this rain X is all about rain. And so I'm going to put this underneath here upside down and this glass is at, or these, uh, these drops are actually gonna flip over the Rain-X and so we'll be able to read Rain-X inside the raindrops. So let me get this set and check out how cool this is. Okay, I'm gonna show you another thing. I've got this green can here. I'm gonna put it on some paper towel so it doesn't roll away. And now that I have that there, it's in position. 
Now I can actually just start shooting a bunch of, of shots. Um, so I've got that shot. Now instead of moving what's underneath, I'm going to move the glass so I get larger and smaller drops of water. And since it's all in focus, I'm good. And so that will also give me some options. All right, in, uh, in addition to moving around the glass here, you can also move the object around. So I've got this little red Solo cup here. So I'll make sure it's red. Then I'll get some white in there, move it around. Good. I'm just going to position this differently. And doing this is going to give me a lot of different options. Just about anything will work, even an old sweater. So lots of color here. So I'm going to stick this in here and get that where it's got lots of color. Position that. That's cool. And I'll just shoot a bunch of this because who knows what we're going to get. We're going to get some greens, some yellows, some grays, some pastels maybe. All right, now that I have all these shots, I'm going to throw them in the Lightroom and really oversaturate them, add some clarity and sharpness to really give it some punch. Let me show you how to do that really quickly. All right, I've taken all of those photos that we took and thrown them into Lightroom, and then I went through and picked out the ones that I thought were the best. And let me show you how I've processed these. And so I'm going to take one of these that is not processed at all. So this one right here, this is sort of a purple one. I'll go into the develop module and really what we want to do is oversaturate everything and really make it high contrast. And so that's pretty simple. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is maybe take the exposure up to brighten it up a little bit. And then I can go in here and throw in some recovery a little bit. I'm just doing this sort of to taste. And so there isn't a, an exact way to do it. So I'm going to make sure these blacks come in and really get those to um, those colors to really pop. I'm going to really increase the clarity here and that's going to make it really, really uh, sharp. And so this is something you wouldn't want to do with the portrait and really crank up the vibrance to make those colors pop and then even more saturation. So I'm watching to make sure these reds don't bleed out underneath here, but I'm really, really pumping those up. Now, the other thing that's going to really make a difference is down here on the darks. I'm going to pull those darks in a little bit, not too much. That's going to give us some nice high contrast. Maybe let the shadows uh, fall out here so that I'm not making them too dark. And then I can go in here and look for colors that I really think are awesome. So by clicking over here on this little adjustment button here, then I can go in here and just say, okay, I want these uh, pinks to be more saturated or less saturated and pull those up and down. So you can see how I can make it more saturated or less saturated just by clicking and dragging. And so that's all I'm doing is doing that. So more red, less red, more orange, less orange. And so you can do that per uh, image and you've got something that really looks cool. In fact, we can go in here and look at the before and after. And the before is on the left hand side, the after is on the right hand side. And you can see there's a pretty big difference between the before and after. So I like the after. Okay, now the next thing we wanna do is prep this for our iPad or our screen. And so what I'm going to do is pop this module out on the right hand side again, go to my crop tool. Now in the crop tool, an iPad has an aspect ratio of four by three. And so I've got a custom aspect ratio of four by three. And then I can crop that if I want to. And then when I export this, I can go in here and say file, export. I've got this set up to go to the iPad. I have this set to a JPEG, sRGB. The quality is 80. That's going to be great. And then this is very important. I have this resized to fit 1024 by 768. That's the resolution of an iPad. Uh, 72 pixels per inch is just fine. I'm sharpening it for a screen. And if I, if I click export, that'll throw that out there to the folder. And then once it's finished, I can see that there is my image. And here's a bunch of other ones that I've already prepped for my iPad. And those are going to look great. Now you can do the same thing for your screen saver or your desktop. Instead of making that a 4x3 crop, well, you would make that whatever your screen is. So it might be a 16x9, 16x10, it might be a 4x3. Uh, you'll have to look that up and see exactly what it is. But this is a good starting point. And if you're not sure, just go with original and have no crop at all. And then you can resize that using your uh, computer's desktop software. So it'll say uh, enlarge to fit or shrink to fit, and it'll work just fine. Well, those are really fun. You can see it's very, very simple, very easy. Now, you don't have to use Lightroom to uh, do all the stuff I just did. You can use uh, any application that uh, edits photos. You just want something that allows you to increase the saturation and sharpen things up. So Photoshop Elements or Photoshop or Aperture or just about anything you can get your hands on, it's going to do the job. And you can see they're awesome photos. 
Well, thank you so much for the question, Paul, and thank you so much for joining us this week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. This week I'm going to show you how to make some really cool pictures that you can use as your wallpaper on your iPad or a screensaver on your computer or maybe something that you can use for the longest intro ever. <laughs> Alright, now that I have all these shots, let me show you really quickly how I process these in Lightroom. Processes these? Digital photography one-on-one -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.